Today you get to choose your own adventure. You can either do the left ink and watercolor or finish it off with colored pencil as shown on the right. I'm using four by six cards through this entire video and I've taped off about a half inch border all the way around the edges. For this first one, we're going to draw presents. And as you're drawing these, they can be a mix of squares and rectangles. These don't need to be perfect. They'll have a little bit of that hand-drawn, actually a lot of that hand-drawn quality. And then you can alternate the size of each of the bows just to make it look even more interesting. This bagley reminds me of the illustrations of Ruben Toledo. I love his illustrations. They're so whimsical. This is kind of a nod in that direction. Once you complete the packages all the way across your paper, we'll go in with water and you're going to wet down your entire paper. Make sure that you've covered the whole thing. You should see a little bit of a sheen, as you can see here, across the entire paper. And using 100% cotton paper will give you the best result. I will tag all of the supplies that I'm using down in the description below. And then we're going to put watercolor across the page in a bit of a gradient. So I'm starting with red and then I mixed up some red and some yellow to create orange and then went back in with some yellow. If you just want to do the watercolor portion, you will stop at that step. If you want to continue with colored pencil, continue on with me here. You'll need a red, an orange and a yellow pencil. And as we work from left to right, you're going to slowly transition through those rainbow colors. So as you can see here, you'll start laying down the orange and you might put a bit of red over it like I'm doing here, just to start transitioning that color and then lean more into the orange shade. And we'll continue to do that all the way across the page. This is just pure orange. And then we'll start mixing again. So as we lay down the orange, you can add some yellow on top of that and then finish off with the yellow. And that completes that one. For this, we'll do some Christmas ornaments and you can use a circular stencil like I'm using here or any circular object that you've got. And then alternate a couple of rectangles for the tops of each of these ornaments. This will make it look as if they're rolling around on the surface. And you can really have fun with this part. This will be the ribbon. These can go any which way and just start off with a point and then make a curve and then follow back into a point again as it meets the ornament. And then we're going to allow that ink to dry and then you'll come back in with your water to wet down your paper thoroughly. When you're grabbing paint out of the pan like I'm doing here, you'll sometimes get more concentrated bits of pigment. Normally you would mix this up in a well, but we're just we're moving through this today. So if you get more concentrated bits of pigment, just work those into the water on your paper and you will be just fine. You can use two different shades of blue here and they will start to blend together as they dry. A way that you can test if your paper is dry is if you touch it with the back of your hand, it should feel like room temperature. If it feels cool to the touch, then it's still damp. So you can either allow your paper to air dry or you can do what I often do, which is use a hair dryer just to speed up that process a little bit and keep going with your card. We'll finish this off with some yellow and brown on the tops to make an antique gold look and then go into peppermint candies. You'll create a mix of circles, all different sizes across your entire page. This is where a stencil can be so helpful. Start off with your larger circles first to place those throughout the page and then you can fill in with smaller circles wherever you've got some extra room. Then you'll place a dot at the center of each of the circles and that will help with our next step. So you will put in curved lines. You'll use six per circle and these will be roughly equidistant from each other. And you'll want to do half of the circles in one direction and half of the circles in another direction. So you'll scatter the differing directions throughout the entire sheet. So right here I have switched direction. I'm just making the curves go the opposite way. It's a simple little switch, but it makes a big difference. 
And right here, I'm using a pen, the Micron 03 pen. I'll use this throughout the video. And the great thing about this is that it is waterproof once it is dry. So it is perfect for watercolor projects like this. Also, if you ever want to use pencil first and then go over your pencil and ink, that is always an option as well if you just want a little more certainty of how your drawing will look when you are finished. After you've finished with your curves, we're going to go back through and wet the paper down. I'm using a pretty large brush for that, a size 16 brush. And then you'll start going back in with your color. This always looks really intense when you first lay it down, but then when I go to the scene where it's dried, you can see how much the intensity lessens as the paper dries. We're doing a gradient on this one, so it's more red on the left side and then fades to a pale pink over on the right. And then adding in the red colored pencil here really makes it pop. And once you finish with that one, we'll go into our next design, which will be Christmas trees. We're going to alternate triangles and then little lines for trunks. If you make these different sizes and then alternate which way they're facing, it will make it a really unique looking card. So you've got two facing one way and then three facing the other way. And you can alternate the widths on these, so some will be a little bit wider and some will be a bit more narrow. And then just fill them in with a squiggly line. You can do any squiggly, scribbly line you like. And fill in each of the trees all the way across the page. By the way, I'm using cold press paper here, which I typically use for watercolor. And it has a bit of nice texture to it, which I really love. You will notice that when I'm using the colored pencil on this kind of paper that you end up with a textured look. If you want a smoother surface, you can always use hot press watercolor paper for this project. I will tag some down in the description below and hot press paper has a smoother feel. It doesn't have the same texture of cold press paper. So when you're using the colored pencil, it'll lay down and blend more smoothly if that is something that you would prefer. Now we will get into wetting the paper for this one. As you switch between colors, make sure that you're rinsing off your brush. I'm doing that off screen, but rinsing between each color. And then as you get to the middle where you want to blend them together, you can run the color over itself like I'm doing here, just to make that gradient a little more gradual. On this one, we are switching up the colored pencil and moving from light to dark. So the opposite of the way that we laid down the paint and then going into Christmas lights. If you start off with a curved line, you'll have a guide for placing your lights and then just draw the little connector coming off the wire. And then if you go down to the point of the light and draw a bit of a raindrop shape, that is the easiest way that I've found to create these lights and just have them face different directions so that it looks realistic, like something you just pulled out of a box for the holidays. And then once you have finished with that, we will of course go back through with our watercolor. So wet that paper down. You might need a couple of coats like I'm doing here because cotton paper will absorb a lot of that water, which is a good thing. It makes the blending of the color really nice and easy. You'll start off with a red from your palette and then use some yellow. And then when you mix the red and the yellow together, you'll get an orange at the center. Once that is dry, come back in with your colored pencils. We're using some classic colors here. And then you are all set. I hope you loved this project. Let me know if you did the watercolor version or the watercolor and colored pencil version.